Okay, there's a lot of players in this story. <laughs> but Rachel brought us also connect what we just learned. Anyway, to, to, to tell you all about all the the uh, the uh, individuals mentioned here, each one is a whole book, quite literally. So we'll just just make reference to them. But Saul Nebler was a famous Hasid. He's the, he's the the great grandfather of the probably great grandfather or grandfather of Mrs. Mochkin. You saw Mochkin looks a bit like him. <laughs> Chaim, you've noticed that. So he was a big chassid and many wonderful, uh, big, big, very great man, very sharp, right young. So he recounted the name of the Hasidic Gvir, the wealthy chassid, the Menachem Mendel Gerari, the famous Gerari Mishpach, as follows. So this Menachem Mendel Gerari related, of course, to the Gerari, uncle, great uncle, great great, great uncle. So this Gerari says that he was a young man in Kishinev. Okay. He was told by Bavron. Who was Bavron? This is, he was the son of the Marin, one of the sons of the Tzemach Tzedek, who was, this Marin was the father-in-law of the Fidi Kerebe. Okay. So let's get this straight now. To get to be some level, he's just telling over the story. This so he was told by the son of the father of the Fidik Rebbe. He talks about himself and he says, when I was a young man, he once traveled from Kishinev to Miezhin. And that's where his father, the Marin, the Didi, lived. And told his father, he's going to his father. So this is worth to know. This, the Mavrom is going to his father, was a Rebbe in his own right, Kavayom. And he said to him, Tata, I don't want the traditional father and son bleeding. I'm not coming to you as a father, a son to a father. I'm coming to you as a chassid to a Rebbe. And he had his own Rebistava. It's a man of some of children. So the father, his humility, said to his son, you want advice of a Rebbe? That you should go to my brother, your uncle, the Rebbe Marash in Lubavitch. So as much as he was the Rebbe in Yezhen, there was a Rebbe that didn't, none of the, the Rebbe was really lasted. Corpus lasted a little bit, but uh, this one, it all kind of, but already as in his lifetime as a Rebbe, he said, oh, you want to go to my, to the young, my younger brother. Go to your uncle, the Rebbe Marash. That's what the father said to the son, so he went. So he came to Lubavitch, this, this Avram is telling, uh, this uh, uh, Avram told the story to this Menachem Mendel, told them he saw them. So Avram is telling the story. So when I came to Lubavitch, I'm saying his first person should be clear. It's a beautiful story. When I came to Lubavitch, since I was regarded as an important guest, I mean, relative, close relative, my uncle. So the Rebbe is lifted, Rebbe Marash's wife prepared a festive welcome. And Rebbe Marash came out to, to, to sit with him, with me, and sat half an hour. Like, like to, to, a, to a nephew. So when it came from his time to leave, he said, Bavrom, I'm going back to relating it to third person. He said, Bavrom says to his uncle, the Rebbe, Rebbe Marash, Feter, uncle, I came in order to have you I didn't, but not, it's not a family visit, but I came as a chassid to, to his Rebbe. Listen to Rebbe Marash's response. Came for Yechidus. Last night, Rebbe Marash says to his nephew, Rebbe Avro, I was in terrible pain. A vein burst. And I had nothing to stop the bleeding until I cut off a piece from my shirt. I think it was in his, uh, he had terrible wounds in his flesh, uh, abdomen. But all in all, that suffering is nothing compared to the difficulty of answering a young man in Yechidus. Today I cannot. Tomorrow, Bezer Hashem will be Yechidus. 
Indeed, the next day, this Avron had the chiddush and Reb Marash. So, PS to the story. So, when he came back to Kishinev, he visited his father on the way back to Kishinev, where he lived in Yezhin, where his father lived. His father said to him, Do, can I give you good advice? It's also his humility. And Ebbe, ultimately, Reb Marash. But the, but the story, really, the, the main story here is that Rebbe answers. Why is it so painful? Because he has to completely in invest himself in the person. That the, the spend, he's not an advice dispenser or a blessing dispenser. You pay your dues, press a button, or the oil, and there comes out a bracha. It's not the way it works. It's complete empathy with the person, complete investure. And if the person has a problem, a spiritual failing, as many stories, they're best to find that within himself and fix it and address it. And then he can then he can share that advice with the chassid. He says, as much as the, the, the bleeding artery, whatever it was there, uh, the pain, nothing compared to the difficulty to answer a young man in Yeshivas. So I need preparation. Can't answer you now, so tomorrow. So we have to know also that, that going to the oil is not the waltz in. It's it's an avoid for the Rebbe. An avoid of, which he wants to do, he wants to help us, but it's an avoid for him to be invested in our in our world and empathize so so intimately and, and work with us, which requires therefore one uh, one goes. But because it's such an intimate connection, that's why the blessing and the bracha follows. Friends, have a wonderful day. I will see you all, God willing, tomorrow. Yasher Kayach. Have a great day, everybody.